Okay, so today we are talking about big O notation. Now this is a very important one in my opinion, and I think pretty much every software engineer or programmer should be aware of how it works um, because I find it very valuable just when doing coding in just everyday scenarios. So I'm gonna be teaching you the basics and what I think is the most important parts that you need to know to get some value out of it when you actually start coding. Um, and this is stuff that's going to come up, one, in interviews, but that's not really, you know, it's kind of like a side side effect. It's like a nice thing. If you know big O notation, you do well in interviews because they usually ask you about it. But two, while I'm coding, I constantly am asking myself, uh, what is the big O notation or the, the big O I would give for like the algorithm I'm writing? And uh, uh, that makes me, that like comes into my decision on how I build things. So I think it's one of those that I always keep in the back of my mind and I think about. Um, and it really has to do with performance and thinking about how your algorithm will scale. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So what is big O notation? Well, it's this thing that basically is a way of measuring or assigning um, these different values to an algorithm or um, some code to determine what the runtime of it will be like over time or if you put in as it scales, as there's more values that you are handling, how how good does it handle the values or how much does it grow? We're going to talk more about that in a second. We're going to visualize that. Um, but these are the values you're going to see. So O of 1, that means it is constant time. You're going to see O of log n, which is logarithmic, O of n, which is linear, and O squared or O of n squared, which is quadratic. These, I would say, are the most common ones you're going to see. Um, and the ones that we're going to be going over in this video. Less, like ones you don't see as much, but like it's nice to know like in the back of your head that these sometimes come up. 2 to the n are, is exponential. n to n, I actually don't know what this is even called. Um, and then n factorial, and that's just factorial. Um, so these come up less. You don't really need to know m too much about them, but when they come up, you can know. And this is basically the order of their growth rate. And so what that means is, is if you have an algorithm that is factorial versus an algorithm that is constant, the algorithm that is factorial, as you pass more values into it, it's going to be much slower than the constant time algorithm. And so the O of 1 is faster than the O of log n, and log n is faster than n. Well, faster is not necessarily the right word to look at this, to look at it, um, but uh, we're going to see that in a second. I feel like the best way to visualize this is actually like uh, in a graph. So we're going to head over to Desmos. This is just a place, a graphing calculator, we can see the values. So what do I mean when I say that uh, O of 1 is faster or scales better than like n factorial. So let's see what the graph of n factorial looks like. So if we take a look at this graph, um, just take a look at this side, okay? This side we're gonna ignore. We're not gonna worry about the negative side for now. Um, and compare this to, and actually, you know, let's not even worry about factorial. That's a pretty big one. So like, for example, y is equal to one. The graph looks like this. No matter how many values we pass in, this is like the performance we expect. We expect it to grow like a flat line. Now compare this to the log function, All right? So over time, the log function gets pretty close to constant, actually. It doesn't actually get that close to constant. We can see this is what the log algorithm looks like. Again, we can put a constant in front of it and that can change where the beginning value looks like, but it's still kind of going to go out to the same place. All right, then there's x, and there is x squared. All right, so let's focus on those for now. So you'll notice, take a look at these three guys right here. They are growing at very different rates, and we can see that as we scale this out. Now what I can do, and by the way, x squared can be x cubed, x to the fourth, and so on. And we can put constants in front. And constants will accelerate the rate at which they kind of start. But over a long period of time, it doesn't affect things. So what do I mean that? What do I mean by that? It's kind of hard to see because this is just mashed up against the side. Let's go back to the, just x squared. Let's take our log function 
and our x function. So for example, we can put some constants in front of this and we can see now that our log function is uh, growing at a pace that looks kind of like the x squared function. But if we scroll out, what we'll see is eventually the log function will always perform like this. And so we can see at about, you know, 4,000 values, that's when the log function is going to uh, be faster than the x function. Right, so this is just a way of seeing how fast something scales or how fast something grows. So if I have an algorithm that looks like this, I expect it to take linear time. So as I pass in more values, I expect it to take this much more time as I pass in more values. For a log logarithmic uh, one uh, algorithm, as I pass more values in, this is what I expect to happen. Um, and then same for x squared. So I expect x squared to be just freaking ginormous. But again, if I can put a huge value in front of x, x for a little bit is going to look bigger than x squared. But if we scroll out, right, eventually, this is actually terrible, you can't even see it, but eventually x squared is going to be larger. Okay, that's just kind of a little bit of background. We're going to come back to that in a second. Um, but the important part is, um, let's take a look at what it looks like to assign these values to code. So uh, something like this where we are just doing addition that is constant time. If statements, um, stuff like that is going to be constant time uh, operations, dividing, that sort of thing. Um, then let's take a look of it, a O of N operation. That would be a for loop. So this is the N right here is how, how many items there are. So when we look at that graph and we were looking at before, you can think of it a for loop. This is how our for loop, for loop is going to scale. As I put a million items, two millions, and so on, we expect the time it, for it to take to uh, look like this. The amount of time should be a graph with the number that it looks sort of like that. Um, and so what we can do is now we can start mixing um, our code together uh, where we can have o of, in, o of 1 inside of our for loop. So here's another example. So we have a for loop here. We're looping, and then we're just adding on to our s value. Here is our sum, right? Uh, so the for loop would be O of n time, and inside of this, this is O of 1 time. So what you do when you have a for loop um, and then something inside the for loop is you multiply them together. So O of n times O of 1 is O of n. So the overall runtime of this algorithm is O of n. Uh, then there's n squared. So n squared happens when we have a for loop inside of another for loop. Right, so things grow exponentially, well, quadratically, not exponentially. Um, in this case, so things are growing quite fast. So the code that I put inside of here, um, I need to be careful about because it's gonna be run a ton of times. So if I were to put more code in here, like if I were to put an algorithm that took O of log n time, then the overall runtime of this would be n squared log n. So you multiply. So when stuff is inside for loops, you multiply them together. Um, the opposite is if it's outside, then you add them together. So if I have a for loop and then I have another for loop, the overall runtime of two for loops that are not inside of each other is O of n. So I could actually have a ton of these, right, like that. And this entire algorithm is going to be still O of n. Now this can be baffling to people because they're like, but wait, this has way more code and way more for loops than this. And you might even say that this runs for longer than this. And that may be the case for small values of n. Because maybe, so if you look at this, this is basically like when we added 1,000 in front. So for a while, for small values of n, it's true that this takes longer. But uh, over the long period of time, like if we have a very large data set, like maybe there's a w 1 million iterations we're going to do, the uh, n squared here, Oh, and I killed my n squared. Put that back. My n squared here is going to take longer. It's 
going to take longer time. So think of this as the constant that is in front that's messing things up. Well, not messing things up. Um, but so when someone says that you're like comparing algorithms and someone says, I have an O of N algorithm and someone else says, oh, I have an N squared algorithm, you don't immediately throw away the N squared algorithm. It may be simpler code to write. And if you're not using a large number of values, sometimes the N squared algorithm is better. So that's something to keep in mind. And o of N is not always strictly better than N squared, which can be kind of counterintuitive. Um, it's intuitive if we look at it like you could just have a ton of for loops in there. So you still have to consider the type of code that's being run with this. Um, but yeah, that's that. And like in general, if you're not if you're not dealing with huge values, it's fine to use like this over this. Um, if it saves, for example, coding time or whatever. But it's good to note if stuff starts to slow down. Some of the reasons could be because you're using n squared algorithms instead of n algorithms. So spend the time to, say, uh, bring it down. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to do as an example here is the uh, O of log n. So this is what a log n uh, algo looks like. So this is a while loop. So here we have while x is above 0, um, and then we're dividing x by 2. And I guess let's use n because that's the that's the variable we've been using. So uh, n greater than 0, and then we divide it by 2. All right, so that is that profile of this algorithm is log n. So let's plug in a value so you kind of get a gist of how this runs. This notion thing is kind of annoying. All right, so we have 100. Then it divides, goes to 50, 25, 12.5, and then 6.25. Right, so you can see how it drastically cuts down on each iteration. So it's something to the effect of the number of times this while loop will run is akin to log n or log 100, right? And maybe like log base 2. And then if we have divided by 3, then it may be log base 3 here. But that's a side note. I actually don't even know if that's right. I just guessed off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, that's this is what an, a log in profile looks like, and it basically cuts in half. Um, and usually, when there's division involved, it's a log problem. Um, and then again, we can mix these together. So I kind of showed it up here, um, but here's another example of it. So I have a for loop inside of a while loop. So this while loop is in log in, or sorry, log in. So this guy is log in. And this is O of n. So the entire profile is n log n because you multiply these together because it's a for loop instead of a while loop. All right, so those are pretty much the basics of big O notation. So these rules, you should now be able to, given some arbitrary code, um, be able to get a gist of what the runtime of it may be and figure out what the big O of it is. And then once you know the big O of it, you kind of get the gist of how fast it may uh, increase when you pass in larger values. Um, so let's do an example here. So here, let's close my four, let's do a curly brace. All right, so take a second to pause this video and attempt this on your own. So this has a lot more code. This is a search algorithm. And you tell me what you think the big O notation of this search algorithm is. Um, all right, so I'm going to go through and break down how I would do this problem. So first off, uh, I kind of like throw away the cruft. So for example, this is all cruft. So that would be all, this is just creating variables. Usually you can ignore those. If you want to think about this, you can think about it as O of 1 time, constant time. Um, then we have some while loop here. Loops are important to think about. So let's see what this works. We don't have to worry about not found. Um, so basically when it finds something, then it stops. But it also makes sure that the index here has not reached the end of the list. Now something to note when you're doing big O as well, usually you're talking about the worst case scenario. So in that case, we're going to assume it never gets found, this item. So this while loop is going to um, go to the end of the list. 
because if I look inside the while loop, I can see the index here is being incremented by one, and that's it. All right, so I'm gonna label this O of N. Um, and then if we look inside here, we can see there's an if statement. This is checking a quality. This particular lookup is O of one. You can ignore that in this case, we didn't really talk about that, but a array lookup is O of one time. Um, we're assigning some variables, incrementing. This entire if statement in here is O of one. Um, and so we can say the entire search function here is O of one plus O of n times, I could type this out. So like one way to look at this is something like that. Like this is kind of how I visualize it in my head. And then if we simplify this, we take the biggest term when we're adding things, which would be this guy here. And then we ignore, we can simplify that to just O of n. All right, let's do another example. So here is binary search. So again, try pausing the video and trying to figure this out on your own, and then we'll walk through this together. Um, so again, I'm gonna take the same technique I did up here where I cut the cruft. So all these variables again, just say that is O of one. And then let's look inside the while loop. So the while loop is a little bit, um, more interesting this time. So we do it while the first is less than or equal to last. Okay, so the value of first is zero and the value of last is the end of the list. So it's usually helpful sometimes to look at this with real uh, numbers. So we can say first is equal to zero and let's say our last is equal to 100 to make this easy. Um, all right, now let's look at uh, what happens inside of the while loop to help us figure out how these are changing. Because that's really what we're looking at is how, how are these are changing. All right, so we can see the middle is computed by first plus last divided by two. So that might be zero plus 100 divided by two. So middle is like 50. Um, and then we can see here, we have an if statement. This is O of one behavior, another else if statement. And then we can see last is equal to middle minus one and or first is equal to middle plus one. Uh, so in this case, right, after the first loop, first is equal to zero and this is equal to 50. Something like that is probably what's going to happen because we or or first is gonna be zero and this is gonna be 100. But if we take a look at this, it's going to cut in half. And then if we do this again, first is equal to zero, last is equal to 25, and so on and so on, we're going to see stuff is slowly cutting in half, cutting in half again and again. And if we look at our, our little profile up here, that's very familiar to what this was. So we can say our binary search, our while loop here, oops, is... O of log n. And so the rest of this is just O of 1 inside of here. This is O of 1 here. So our overall is O of log n. All right, last one. This one I'm not going to go over the answer. Let me know in the comments below what you think the runtime of this one is. I'm curious if you guys can figure it out. So this is a selection sort. Um, but yeah. Last thing I just want to mention is I it's good to know some general uh, what some general algorithms the runtimes are so you can pull them up when you need them um, and that's kind of the stuff that I think about when I'm picking out the algorithms is how fast they are and what their O of runtime is. But there you go that is big O notation um, and the basics of it.